Okay, so I did another monogram uh, in the black acrylic. They're 14 by 14, and they generate a lot of waste in that cut. But it's a lot of good usable material for smaller projects. And that odd shape is going to make it a challenge to get set up in light burn and maximize that surface area. But I got a cool tip and trick that's gonna allow us to do this really easy. Without having any camera set up on the X-Tool, we're gonna bring this image into Lightburn and maximize all of that surface. So this is what I did. So I take and lay a piece of black cardstock or anything real dark underneath it to cover up the honeycomb so that's not taken in the photograph. But I get the side, the left side of the honeycomb in the image where I've got my rule. And if you'll notice that in the photograph, that rule on that honeycomb is perfectly perpendicular to the edge of my frame of my photograph. That's how I know I have my camera not tilted forward or back, because that if you were to take a picture with it rotated forward or back, it's going to come to a point in the corner instead of running parallel to the side of the photograph. So this keeps me from getting a skewed image and to get it nice and square in my photo. Okay. So we took the picture with my phone, your SLR, whatever you want, and I've uploaded my picture from my phone to my camera, or from my camera to my PC. I go over here to import, I put it on my desktop, I grab it and I open it, brings in, I've got a very high resolution image to work with. And since it is such high resolution, I shouldn't have to do anything with adjusting this image. I'm simply gonna right click and tell it I've got to select it first, right click, and tell it to trace the image. And look, I've got a real nice outline around there. I've got all this over here going on, but that's irrelevant. Tell it to delete image after trace. Okay. Now I'm going to ungroup everything, grab, grab just my outline, move it out of the way, and then I'm going to select all of this trash and tell it to delete. Now, if I grab this, bring it over here, you can see that is huge, but real easy fix, real easy fix. I'm going to grab my piece and grab a tape measure and take a physical measurement of my piece of material. And you can measure height or you can measure width. It doesn't really matter. You just need a measurement of one whichever one is the easiest to measure. Now this one is really kind of screwy because it sticks out further here than it does here and out here. So you don't measure here, you measure here, but you're kind of eyeballing it. That's about five and a quarter, five and, uh, five and uh, two, four, two, three eighths. Uh, and here, same thing. It's sticking out much, or much higher here than anywhere else. So if I come here, uh, about seven and three eighths, not quite seven and a half. So now that I've got that measurement, come back over here to light burn, minimize me. And I'm going to make sure that you have your dimensions and your ratio locked. And my height was about 7.3 and hit tab. And it's saying the width should be around 5.7, and that's uh, right, about right. It was very, very close, and all we're looking here for is a tool path anyway. Not doing a cut shape, but this is such an odd piece, and we need to get a, a, a pretty accurate uh, cut shape. Now, I want to bring in my cat. I'm going to do earrings on this one. I'm going to add it to the project, and I want to see how many of these I can get into this piece of plastic. So I start my bottom corner and I start creating a grid. Come on, there we go. All right, not gonna get all those in there, but that's how the grid array works. So let's not try and be too greedy and make this as easy as possible to get these in here uh, without any uh, overlapping. All right, now, this step is important. Grab your outline, bring it off the work bed, select all your pieces, 
bring them off your work bed out here beside of it. And the reason we want to take it off the work bed is we're getting ready to create an SVG of this screen. And if we were to control A, select everything on the screen, not only does it take everything selected into consideration, it takes this work table into consideration and makes that square part of the SVG and it gets in the way. So take everything off of the work bed, select all, then come up here to arrange and nest selected. Now when you go into nest selected, a lot of things are gonna happen. It's not part of Lightburn and it's a third party source, but they shake hands with each other and it's doing some pretty neat things in the background to save you some steps. And you're not going to see them if your computer's really fast and the connections are fast. It's going to happen without you even knowing what's going on. So we click on Nest Selected, and there was a pop-up there for a second. Now it's gone because we've opened up a web browser and we've gone to svgnest.com. Now it's asking us for a demo, upload SVG. Well, we need to upload an SVG. What SVG, you ask? Well, that's what Lightburn did for us. If we go back to Lightburn, it says waiting for nesting. The file name to import has been copied to the clipboard. Click OK when nesting is complete. So when you opened up that nest selected, Lightburn created an SVG and put it on your clipboard for you. So all you have to do is go back to your browser, say upload SVG, file name, right click, and paste because it's on your clipboard. Tell it to open, and there is your SVG. Now, had you not taken that off of the workspace, it still would have worked, but there would have been this odd square that would have been blocking part of your controls, your start nest and stuff. So take it off the work bed, just get that out of the way. It's a lot cleaner and a lot easier to use. Now, if you were nesting materials in a rectangular or square piece of material, you would not need to do this next step. But because I, I do have a lot of, of remnants laying around like this that I can now utilize much easier using this step, you need to go into your settings and tell it to, you want to, uh, and especially if you're working with uh, parts with finger joints, these eyeball shaped crescent moons, they can be interlocked in each other. Tell it to explore part in part interlocking. And because we're using this odd shaped piece of material and not a rectangular piece, tell it to explore concave areas. Now, I also increase my possible positions by telling it not just to have four part rotations, but I give it 12 part rotations. And tell it to uh, save settings and I've got what? I've got six cats there. Tell it to what? Click on the bin. All right, click on the. I didn't see. I thought I did it already. Click on the outline to use as bin. So that's here. Click on that. Make sure that okay. Our settings are done, and start next. There we go. Six and six pieces done. We might could get one or two more in there, but we're not going to get too greedy right now. So stop nest, download SVG, go back into Lightburn, tell it, okay, we're done nesting. Select your SVG nest output and tell it to open. And there is that piece from Love SVG, not Love SVG, S SVG nest. Now, if I bring this into my center of my workspace, I come to my piece, I can double check. I need to put everything on a line so that I can see real well and make sure that nothing's overlapping. That one is awful close. Yeah, that one overlaps. So that's a potential setting. Actually, you know what? That could be in the spacing. So let's try this. Let's uh, go back out, go here, take that off the page. We're gonna get, well, we'll keep one of those. No, not, we'll get rid of all these. 
starting from scratch, bring him in, add the project, bring it over, and this time let's go for, well, no, let's stay for six because that one overlapped. So go to our array tool, and two, we get six of them, okay. Control A for select all, go to arrange, nest selected, upload SVG, right click, the right click, paste, open. All right, right click, or not right click, we're going to select that as our bin. We're going to come here to our settings, space between parts. Now, right now it's telling you zero space between parts. Well, how much is a space? If you go over and hover over your question mark, it'll tell you exactly one SVG unit is equal to one pixel, which is equal to approximately one seventy second of an inch. On Lightburn, I, we have a 0 .08 curve as, according to their specifications. So uh, one divided by 72 is 0 .014. So 0 .08 curve divided by 0 .014. That's about 5.7 spaces. So tell it I want to have six, let's just say seven spaces between parts. Let's give it 12 rotations. We want to look at part in part and explore con uh, concave areas, save settings and start nest. Now let's see if we get six of them in there pretty quick. There we go, that was fast. And now it's still working, trying to find the best optimum one. Uh, but since they're already all in there, we can just tell it to stop nest, download SVG, go into light burn. Okay, it's done. We want to open and let's uh, take that to the center of our page and let's go to, to there. Put everything on an outline. They can get them all. There we go. And now look, see if we have any that are overlapping. See, the space is much larger. We should, well, that one's off of the cut path, but I've got room to play with and move stuff around. That looks like that's the only one. And, and keep in mind, we did a, a very close, uh, image photograph, so this toolpath may not be exactly accurate either. So what I would do in this case is just come here and select those four and just move her in because we've got the space. Now we know we're not near the edge, we're not over the edge, and I can do the same thing with these two up here. Now I'm looking there to make sure that I'm getting past that loop on that lowest one. And I'm going to bring her down a little bit. Because I feel good about these lines. It's the outline that's going to be the biggest approximation. But that looks like that's going to be good. So I can go back out. And I'm going to use this to actually frame my laser. And you can do that with a, a wire frame or you can just uh, draw your rectangle around this and go to your full points and frame that and then feel good about that. But that, boys and girls, is a real quick uh, way to nest. Once you get really familiar with that, and I recommend doing this for fun before you ever need to do it for real. Uh, but that's uh, in your arrange and nest selected, and it'll take you outside to svgnest.com. Play with it. But the biggest tip I can tell you is take it off of your work path, uh, your work bed area to create your SVG initially. If you're not playing with rectangular toolpaths, remember to explore concaves and interlock part and part. Uh, increase your spacing. And if you're depending on your laser and what your curve is, 
you'll have to calculate what your spacing needs to be. I feel like on mine, I, I needed to probably be at least uh, seven spaces to feel comfortable with this Xtool D1. So uh, we can get out of there. I hope this is something that you found informative. If you're still watching, thank you. Uh, looks like we're going to hit my 500 subscribers before the end of the day. We're halfway to that monetization. Cha-ching, baby. That's what we're after. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you're still watching this, that means you're probably taking something away from my videos. And you haven't subscribed yet? Shame on you. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications for future uh, videos on, and, and, and tips on light burn for Xtool. Uh, this has been Steve, Hobo with Wood. I enjoy doing these videos. I hope you've enjoyed watching them. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.